everyone. I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. Barbershops and books go together, right? Mayor Sly James has launched a new initiative to improve youth reading. Several urban barbershops have partnered with Turn the Page KC, the Kansas City Public Library, and Link to encourage fathers to read to their children by making free books available at the barbershops. A major international study has shown that the number of books at home can predict academic achievement, particularly for low-income families. And to share the fun, you can post those pictures of the reading using the hashtag Dads Turn the Page. On Father's Day, Turn the Page KC will select a winner of this promotional contest, and the winner gets Royals tickets. On June 13th, the historic 18th and Vine District will continue an annual tradition of honoring jazz artists by immortalizing their names in 30-inch bronze medallions embedded right there in the sidewalks on 18th Street. The induction ceremony is free and open to the public. It takes place in front of the Gem Theater, where six medallions will be revealed. This year's inductees are Benny Moten, Claude Fiddler-Williams, Coleman Hawkins, Myra Taylor, Lester Young, and Everett Devan. Family representatives will receive replicas of the medallions during the program at the Gem Theater stage. A concert featuring Kevin Mahogany and Norman Brown will follow the unveiling. Concert tickets are $30. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation. As summer finally arrives, residents are invited to celebrate with Parks and Rec. We have many fun events planned that the whole family will enjoy. Kansas City Parks and Recreation was recently announced as one of four Class 1 finalists for the 2015 National Gold Medal Awards for Excellence in Park and Recreation Management. The Gold Medal Award honors communities that demonstrate excellence in long-range planning, resource management, and agency recognition. The winner will be announced at the National Recreation and Park Association's conference in September. Bring your tattered and faded flags to the Missouri-Korean War Veterans Memorial on June 14th to be officially and respectfully retired. The annual Flag Day celebration begins at 1.30 p.m. in Washington Square Park at Pershing and Maine. This year's keynote speaker is retired Rear Admiral J. Stanton Thompson, United States Navy. The event is free and open to everyone. Come out to Southmoreland Park for the 23rd annual Heart of America Shakespeare Festival. This free festival will take place from June 16th to July 5th and features King Lear, a great Shakespearean tragedy. Gates open at 6 p.m. with pre-show activities prior to the 8 p.m. curtain. Admission continues to be free, but donations are gratefully accepted. For more information, visit kcshakes.org. Celebrate National Teddy Bear Picnic Day on July 10th with a party on the front lawn of the Kansas City Museum. Pack a picnic, bring a blanket, and grab your favorite teddy bear for an afternoon of fun with music, games, crafts, and more. The picnic is presented by Healthcare USA. Registration is limited. Sign up today at caseyparks.org. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit caseyparks.org and click on the calendar. Or give us a call at 816-513. 7500. The Missouri Department of Conservation wants to help you discover nature and look, but don't adopt baby animals. May is the month when orphaned wildlife is most likely to be encountered. Although you may not see an animal's mother, she is almost always nearby, waiting for a safe time to return to her young. Baby animals are rarely abandoned. Actually, the parent animals are afraid of people and will retreat into the woods when you approach. The parent animals just can't constantly care for their animals. Oftentimes during the day, for many hours, they're in the woods gathering food and water for their animal babies. It is not practical or even desirable that native wildlife species be captured by humans and raised for later release into the wild. It typically leads to animals that are not fit for life in the natural world. They lack survival skills that should have been taught to them by their parents. Plus, it is illegal to keep wildlife in captivity without a proper permit. Good intentions usually lead to unhappy endings. Enjoy nature, but leave it where it belongs.
The Kansas City, Missouri Police Department has added two new members to its crime-fighting stable. Their names are Rhett and Leader. The horses are now part of the KCPD Mounted Patrol. We visited the unit at Camp Lake of the Woods in Swope Park to see how the horses are adjusting to their new roles with KCPD. You'll notice Rhett as the tall and dark brown gelding and Leader is a bit shorter and lighter. They need to have a calm disposition to undergo the rigorous training they need to be ready for patrol. Sergeant Joey Roberts is the supervisor of KCPD's Mounted Patrol. We put them through a series of sensory obstacles, basically making them brave or giving them courage. Uh, horses are natural, uh, they're naturally a predatory animal, which makes them uh, high flight animals. They're basically scared of everything. And we've got to take that and turn them into being brave so that we can take them out on the street, uh, have them around people, scary stuff. And it, it all starts in the barn. And it's, it's really just about building courage into the horses. They need to stay in shape and be ready for any situation. They ride year-round and are monitored closely in extreme weather conditions. If it's not safe to go out, they don't travel. We're in situations where other motorists, they treat us like another vehicle. Uh, you know, so it, so it is dangerous. I mean, there's things that, you know, if, if something startles a horse, you know, even, you know, just a little bit, you know, the horse might move a little. So you've always got to be aware of your surroundings and obstacles and uh, to make sure that you don't put yourself and the horse in a compromising position. Taking care of Rhett and Leader and the other horses is a full-time job and it's expensive. It includes feeding, training equipment, upkeep of the facility, and medical expenses. There was a time before cars when law enforcement only used horses, which made contact and communication with the public easy. But probably one of the other things is the public relations aspect. It kind of makes officers more approachable when we're patrolling neighborhoods. You're a, you're a tower of police visibility, so it's an excellent crime deterrent. Um, you know, it, but it really it breaks down barriers in the community. It's kind of an icebreaker, so that uh, to kind of promote that, you know, community interaction. You know, people will come out of the house and talk to us. Uh, it gives you kind of a better understanding of what crime problems are in the neighborhoods. When they appear in parades or anywhere in public, they attract the most attention. Horses are such majestic creatures. You know, everybody wants to come up and pet them, and just I think they're just fascinated by the animal. Which, you know, we're kind of, you know, people are more apt to come up and talk to the horse versus the officer, but it's, that's kind of what opens that line of communication for us to start talking to the community. The Mounted Patrol is a specialized operations unit of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. It came about in 2006, several years after a nonprofit group was formed. Eight officers and a sergeant are assigned to the division. Everybody that's in the unit now, that has came out here has zero riding experience when they came to the unit. So, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, everybody's got horse background. Everybody that's here now had zero riding ability when they, whenever they t came to the unit. Uh, you know, I can train officers to ride horses, but you can't teach somebody how to be a good cop. The not-for-profit 501c3 is called Friends of the KC Mounted Patrol. It accepts tax-deductible donations. For more information, visit kcmountedpatrol.org. I'm Sergeant Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. City employees have been competing with other local businesses in the annual Corporate Challenge Competition. For more than 20 years, the city has participated in these events. They're like the Olympics, sort of. They promote health, wellness, and camaraderie. The events include track and field, distance running, basketball, swimming, softball, and more. On Memorial Day, the zoo welcomed a baby gorilla. The new baby and her mom, Makari, can now be seen in the African Congo section of the zoo. This is the first gorilla birth at the Kansas City Zoo since 1975. Both baby and mom are doing quite well. The Kansas City Zoo is home to a breeding group of one male and three female western lowland gorillas. 
Summertime can mean ozone alert days. To improve air quality, the Mid-America Regional Council is hosting the 2015 Green Commute Challenge. The program encourages participants to carpool, bus, bike, walk, or telecommute for work. Employees can earn points by logging work-related trips for a chance to win some great prizes. Last year's challenge prevented more than 390,000 pounds of emissions throughout the city. The Green Commute Challenge runs from June 1st through August 28th. To sign up, visit mark, that's M-A-R-C, dot org. The city launched the Smart Cities Initiative this week with Cisco Systems by formally signing the contract. The program will enhance the internet connectivity, enable efficiencies in management of public infrastructure, introduce new revenue streams, and ultimately improve the citizen experience in our urban core. This program will also bring new economic development by attracting technology startups from across the globe to test their concepts here in Kansas City. I'm extremely grateful that we were selected for this uh, uh, public-private partnership. I think it shows that there are uh, private entities that understand what we are doing here in Kansas City and how we're going about doing it. And based on the way that we worked with Google, I think they found out that Kansas City is an extremely easy place uh, to work and to engage in those public-private partnerships. Uh, prototype, I believe, of that kiosk. How many are there going to be? Where are they going to be located? Can you tell us about that? There are 13 kiosks planned along the streetcar station uh, stops. So there, uh, there's conduit that has been pulled already in place where the uh, stations have been constructed. And there will be about 12 others around downtown, so the River Market, Crossroads, and Power and Light neighborhoods, with the goal of, uh, and we're actually going to have a community engagement process that will help coordinate the locations with high traffic and it also complement our downtown Lake program. So it's a total of 25 then? Total of 25. Okay. And then after that first 25, the program pays for itself through revenue that any future kiosks can be placed at no cost to the city. As the mayor mentioned, this is the first uh, city in the North American uh, continent to do this type of stuff. So this is, we were out there on unplowed ground uh, trying to figure out a way that uh, could move the city forward. So Great work by staff, great work by the city council in embracing this issue, and I look forward to seeing what comes out of this agreement. This is just the start of what it means to be a smart city and how it will uh, affect not only the streetcar corridor, but the east side, the north land, and the south land as we move forward. So I'm excited about what this presents, and we'll get to the signatures and get this thing in gear. The public-private partnership will enable the city to build out the largest smart city network in North America. A smart city uses communication networks, wireless sensor technology, and intelligent data management to make decisions in real time about infrastructure needs and service delivery. The technology can be used in a variety of ways to improve services, from parking to street lighting to water management to public safety. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash KCMOCCO. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.